Greenhouse warming theory is rapidly becoming the most expensive mistake ever made in the history of science. Video 5. Extensive non-explosive basaltic lava flows cause sudden global warming. The orange contours on this global map show that air temperatures in many of the most populated areas of North America and Europe were as much as 3.5 degrees Celsius warmer than usual during the first winter following the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines in June 1991. Yet as explained in video 4, there was net global cooling of approximately one half degree Celsius for three years following this major explosive eruption. This period, December through February, is precisely the months when ozone depletion is greatest in the Northern Hemisphere. What's going on? The Pinatubo eruption exploded approximately 10 megatons of chlorine into the stratosphere. Remember, as discussed in video 3, that one atom of chlorine in the lower stratosphere under winter temperatures can catalyze destruction of more than 100,000 molecules of ozone. The first routine measurements of total column ozone in the atmosphere began in 1927 by pointing a new type of instrument, the Dobson Spectrophotometer, up into the sky above Arosa, Switzerland at 47 degrees north latitude. Total column ozone varies with every measurement, but long-term averages of the data document systematic changes. The black line in this graph shows the average annual mean ozone above Arosa. Note that the values remained relatively constant on average from 1927 to 1975. By early 1991, ozone had become depleted by about 5% compared to average levels from 1927 to 1975. As discussed in video 3, this depletion was contemporaneous with increases in manufactured CFC gases shown in green increasing downward. In 1992 and 1993, however, ozone above Arosa had become depleted by an additional 5% following the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Less ozone in the ozone layer allowed more ultraviolet B solar radiation to reach Earth, where it dissociated bad ozone pollution in industrial areas, as discussed in video 3, causing warming of air. By late winter 1992, however, the particle sizes of the sulfuric acid aerosols had grown large enough and spread widely enough around the world to cause net global cooling that lasted three years. This 5% depletion had recovered within a decade or so, but then there was a second 5% depletion in 2011, following the 100 times smaller explosive eruptions of AF Fjallajökull and Grimsvatn in Iceland in 2010. Thus, explosive volcanic eruptions are causing substantial ozone depletion and associated warming, but they are also forming aerosols in the lower stratosphere that reflect and scatter sunlight, causing a net global cooling. In 2006, I discovered published data from ice cores drilled under Summit Greenland that clearly show the greatest amounts of volcanism recorded in Greenland ice, shown in black, occurred from 12,000 to 9,500 years before present, precisely when the world warmed out of the last ice age, shown by air temperatures in red. This contemporaneity suggests the warming may have been caused by the volcanism. But this just didn't make sense. As described above, major explosive volcanic eruptions are clearly observed to cause sudden global cooling of about one-half degree Celsius for a few years. How could volcanic eruptions cause both cooling and warming? This was an enigma that piqued my curiosity. I climbed my first active volcano at age 19 and have studied volcanoes for more than 55 years. This is the enigma that got me started on the 13 years of research discussed in these videos. Being retired, I was able to put aside most other things in my life to concentrate full-time trying to figure out what in the world was happening. This volcanism that ended the Ice Age can be traced primarily to well-dated basaltic volcanic centers in Iceland. Basalts erupting under ice build vertically, forming these distinctive flat-top mountains known as tuya. The top of the glacier, shown by the blue dashed line, was up to 1,000 meters above the land. Basalts are primitive magmas that come directly from Earth's upper mantle. 
They are much hotter than magmas ejected by major explosive volcanoes and contain 10 times more chlorine. They typically flow out over the land without much explosive activity as observed in the relatively small eruptions in Hawaii. Basaltic eruptions are rarely explosive, so they do not form major aerosols in the lower stratosphere. Since the end of the last ice age, temperatures have peaked every thousand years or so, and nearly all of these peaks were contemporaneous with extrusions of at least 300 square miles of basaltic lava flows. For example, the eruption of Eldia in Iceland in 939 AD was contemporaneous with the onset of the medieval warm period. The eruption of basaltic lavas in Craters of the Moon National Monument in south central Idaho, 2200 years before present, was contemporaneous with the Roman Warm Period. There is still a lot of work needed to map and date major basaltic lava flows, but available data support the contemporaneity of major basalt flows and major periods of warming every thousand years or so since the last ice age. One of the largest known basalt flows formed in Siberia 251 million years before present, covering an area of 3 million square miles almost as large as the United States. Just imagine black basaltic lava fields covering all the land from New York City to San Francisco, from Seattle to Miami. Oceans warm to hot tub temperatures. Basalts emit large volumes of sulfur dioxide gas that combines with water to form sulfuric acid. The oceans became very hot and highly acidic, causing 96% of all ocean species to go extinct. The largest known basalt field covering more than 4 million square miles formed 201 million years before present as Africa and North America began rifting apart to form the Central Atlantic Ocean. As long as this volcanism was subaerial, there was major warming and major mass extinctions. The third largest mass extinction was 66 million years before present when the Deccan basalts covered 200,000 square miles of India causing major global warming. The dinosaurs were already in severe decline by the time a major asteroid formed a crater nearly 100 miles in diameter in Mexico. Over the past 200 years, geoscientists have pieced together a geologic time scale based on meticulous studies of sediments, fossils, and radiometric age determinations. This figure shows the geologic eons, eras, periods, epochs, and ages for the past four billion years. Geoscientists have found that sedimentary layers, such as those observed in the Grand Canyon, formed in the same climate over millions to tens of millions of years. Then there's often a sudden change in climate, causing a sudden change in sediment and fossil types, marking the beginning of a new geologic period, epoch, or age. Many of these sudden changes are contemporaneous with major basaltic lava flows. The larger the flow, the greater the climate change. More than 200 major basalt flows have been mapped on Earth. The largest are shown by red arrows in this figure. Most formed at the end of geologic periods when there were sudden changes in climate sedimentation types and fossils. Most were formed in rift zones where continents were breaking apart. 80% of volcanic eruptions take place underwater. It's only those eruptions on land that have major effects on climate. In August 2014, a basaltic volcano named Barthabunga began extruding lava over the ground in central Iceland, in the rift zone just north of Vatniokal ice cap. Within six months, the lava covered an area of 33 square miles the size of Manhattan, the largest basaltic eruption since 1783. In 2014, 15, 16, average global temperatures rose 0.3 degrees at a rate that was more than three times faster than the warming from 1975 to 1998 caused by humans manufacturing CFC gases. While basalts contain more than 10 times the amount of chlorine and bromine found in explosive magmas, it is not clear how these water soluble gases get lofted into the lower stratosphere. Air convecting off the very hot lava flows must play a major role. Ozone is not depleted as much during these lava flows as during explosive eruptions, so we still have much to learn about the chemical mechanism for the observed warming. Clearly, however, large basaltic eruptions covering hundreds to millions of square miles of Earth 
are widely observed to be contemporaneous with global warming throughout Earth history. Ozone depletion is the only mechanism that I can find that can explain the added heat coming from sun. Thank you.